Good morning. It's wonderful to be here with you this morning. We gather together for worship here at Badger Lutheran Church. It's a little bit of a cooler morning, a little rainy. Seasons are changing. Harvest is happening, maybe getting almost done for most. Some have a bit left, but uh, some of the uh, biggest operators with the most acres still have some some quite a bit of work left. But I talked to some who are, are starting to uh, uh, finish things up and put things away. So that's just the way that goes. But it also lets us know we're getting closer to Norwegian supper time. So less than two weeks now. And we've got a few things going on today. A um, little coffee time after worship. Uh, then I know that uh, some of you, I hope a bunch of you, will help with the rolling and the baking of the lefsa. We got the potatoes prepared last night. That was great. And uh, there are a few things coming up, I guess. Uh, uh, next, this coming Saturday will be um, some work with uh, the dessert cookies, Krumkaka spritz. Uh, the following Monday, the little bread crackers. Um, you can see all that information. The tickets are still for sale. And uh, you can contact Amy about those tickets. I'm usually telling people I call on the phone, you know, come in 8 to noon, Monday through Friday, get your tickets, uh, get worker tickets, get uh, event tickets for that great event. Today is a youth event. Um, I think it's um, youngest grades are 2nd through 6th and 7th and through 8th, and we did say in the, in the bulletin what we are planning to do, but the weather has caused us to change our plans. So we won't be taking hay rides and, and going out to uh, the Larson Pond. But we are going to be here at the church. And there are going to be some great things happening, some games played, some food to eat, some crafts to make, something about a, a mason jar and a fall luminary, something to light inside. Um, should be great fun. Basically everything's starting, Chrissy, at 1.30? Yeah, for all the ages? Yeah. So... Everybody that wants to come, friends, uh, all, we got a lot of things that we are able to do and want to do and want to help those kids to have a great, enjoyable time today. Also, next Sunday, a week from today, has two uh, great events happening on the same day. It is Reformation Sunday, that is always the last Sunday in October, but also we're having confirmation for four students, so that's just an awesome, great event we can all share together. I'm guessing there'll probably be a little bit of a reception after the uh, worship service during the coffee hour, something about that. I don't know the details. I'm not in charge of planning that. But it really is wonderful to uh, celebrate and, and help those students as they make those next steps in life towards discipleship as uh, confirming their faith. That's great. Um, we haven't done this for a while, but uh, it's the fourth Sunday of the month. We always used to do this every fourth Sunday. We would come up to the front and process down the aisle and put our offering on the, on the offering plates here. And, and if you had um, sacks of groceries or things that you brought, canned goods or whatever, those were given to the Lord's cupboard. So we're going to do that today. I'm trying to remember, oh yeah, a year and a half ago. That's what we used to do. But... Uh, Ushers will move that table out during the offering time, and we'll just invite people to process down front. If your mobility is challenged, send it with somebody else. That's okay. You don't have to make the long walk. You can send it with somebody else. That'll be just fine. Are there any other announcements of things I might have missed? No? All right. So, Take a good breath. You can stand if you're able. You don't have to stand, but you could stand. Peace of the Lord be with you always. You can greet those around you.
Let us pray. Oh Lord, this congregation of your people gather before you this morning and gather in your presence as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we see the rain falling and know that's in the forecast for today, but we pray, O oh Lord, even more that your Holy Spirit falls upon us like a gentle rain and your Holy Spirit works in us to satisfy the longings and thirstings of our heart that we long and thirst for you, the living God, and that you fulfill and give us your Spirit's presence working within us and through us that we might understand the truths of your word, that we might share these together, that we might be refreshed and restored. All this we pray in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and be seated, congregation. It is time for a message with the kids. And I think some kids might be heading this direction. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> hey, Mackenzie. Can you guys make room with your feet for Mackenzie to sit down? Yeah? Yeah? And you want to sit by your brother too? Yeah? There you go. Sit right here. Sit right there in the middle. There you go. All right. Good morning. How was school this past week? For those of you that go to school. Was it okay? Some of you had days off, right? Two days off. That's pretty good. Three days off. Wow. Conferences and all that good stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. So, how about in Des Moines? Did you guys get school off too? Yeah? What a deal. Pretty good. So, I have a question. It's kind of a yes or no question. All right? Can we ask for help? Yes, yeah, we can ask for help. We ask for help. We can ask for help from many different people, right? There's a Bible story that's going to be read today about a man named Bartimaeus. Try to say his name, Bartimaeus. Mm -hmm. His daddy's name was Timaeus. So he's known as the son of Timaeus, Bar Timaeus. Bar means son of. Did you know that? Maybe not. There's a fun thing to learn. Bar Timaeus means the son of Timaeus. So Bar Timaeus asked for help. He called out to Jesus for help because he was blind couldn't see. He had some kind of eye disease or something that he was born with. He called out to Jesus for help. And guess what? Jesus helped him. And I think that shows us that we can also ask for help. We can ask Jesus. We can ask God for help. Of course. We can ask other people too. Who are some people we can ask for help? Yes. Parents. Yes. Who else? Who? Nobody. Nobody. Oh, you silly. <laughs> Who else can we ask for help? Grandpa. Grandpa and grandmas, yes. Who else? Um, the, whole the whole family. Anybody got other ideas? <laughs> yes. Yes. Who? Cousins, Cousins yes. <laughs> Who else? Who else? True, true. How about teachers? How about pastors? How about principals? How about policemen? Yeah, yeah, all, all kinds, firemen? Yeah, yeah, all kinds of people you can ask for help. Do you think those bigger people out here ask for help? Yeah. If you're an adult, can you ask for help? Yeah, they do. Do you think they ask Jesus for help? I sure hope they do. <laughs> Jesus is our ultimate helper. So that's a good thing to remember. So that's what we want to remember. And when you hear that Bible story about Bartimaeus, 
Hear the part when he calls out to Jesus for help, okay? He asks, Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy. So that means help me. Let's pray. It's a repeat after me kind of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for remembering us and for hearing us when we ask for help. Amen. You can go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, good morning. It's a great day today. Pastor, would you would you stay up here? We're going to kind of do a little, well, not tag team thing, but I'd like you to stand where the people can see you. You can relax just a little bit, okay? But this isn't quite so formal. Well, this morning, I'd like to take a, a couple of minutes to, to uh, give a little recognition to uh, Pastor Scott, as well as his wife Kim and your children. Uh, it's been quite a uh, <coughs> interesting season that we've been going through in the last year and a half. <coughs> and I think the, the work that you and your family have uh, done for Badger Lutheran Church is outstanding. And my beautiful bride uh, found uh, what I feel is the perfect card for me to read to you today because I, I can't come up with the words, but other people can. So I'd like you to just think that you're here not by chance, but by God's choosing. He made you the unique person you are and compared you to no one else. You lack nothing that his grace can't give you. He has allowed you to be here at this time in history to fulfill his special purpose for this generation. So, as a congregation, we want you to know that we're very grateful that you're here. And um, because your family has put a lot of work specifically to help get us through this time, um, what the council would like to have you do is take an extra weekend where you can go and spend time with your family. We've got a little something here to help defray the costs. I don't know how far you'll get on 20 bucks, but you know, it, <coughs> it's something, it's something. So um, from all of us, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, the first reading today is from Jeremiah 31. This is what the Lord says, sing with joy for Jacob, shout for the foremost of the nations, Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng, throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. We'll read Psalm 126 today. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. The 
Our second reading for today, for today is from Hebrews 7. Now, there have been many of those priests since death has prevented them from continuing in office, but because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he, is always, he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above from the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weaknesses, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son, who has been made perfect forever. This is the end of our readings. reading is from the end of chapter 10 in Mark's gospel, beginning in verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go ahead, be seated. As Christians, and I think that's primarily my audience this morning, as Christians, we believe that saying yes to Jesus is important. I often say that we should remember that Jesus says yes to us in our baptisms, and that then, later on, it's important for us to say yes to Jesus. One of the first times that we formally say yes to Jesus, but maybe not the first time, but one of the first times that we formally say yes to Jesus in our church tradition is called confirmation, the affirmation of your baptism. But did you also know that saying yes to Jesus is more of a continuation? It's a continuous process. It's something that happens more than once, frequently repeated part of the life of a disciple of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus is one who follows Jesus on the road, on the road of life. Part of the journey that Jesus was on brought him to the cross. He didn't avoid the cross, but he went willingly to the cross. And there he laid on his life, not only for his friends, but for all people. 
all of that is an introduction to share with you more about Mark chapter 10. And I think it's important to understand the context of Mark chapter 10. If you had your Bibles with you, maybe some of you do, you would open them up and look at Mark chapter 10 and see what follows next is Mark chapter 11, of course. But what is in Mark chapter 11? It's the gospel narrative of what we call Holy Week. These include the events of Palm Sunday of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, the cleansing of the temple, the various teachings of Jesus, and then Jesus leaves Jerusalem just to the neighboring suburb of Bethany. Then he comes back into Jerusalem the next day for the Last Supper in Jerusalem in the upper room. And then that evening, the prayers in Gethsemane where he was arrested, and then his torture, his trial, and his crucifixion. All of those follow in the next bunch of chapters. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in Mark's gospel. But here we are at the end of Mark chapter 10. But what is going on is that Jesus is approaching Jerusalem. And what is experienced is that there's a lot of tension between Jesus and the disciples, between the high priests and the council of 70 people, the Sanhedrin, these leaders of the Jewish nation in terms of religious leadership. There's some tension going on between Jesus and the disciples and all those leaders. Today's verses are in Jericho, 15 miles to the east of Jerusalem. Jericho is very far downhill from, from Jerusalem. It's a couple thousand feet to ascend and get up to Jerusalem from where Jericho is. Jesus is about to make this journey up to Jerusalem. It's going to be his last journey to go into Jerusalem. And this is one of the final times of people encountering Jesus outside of Jerusalem and before this whole Passion Week begins. There's a large crowd in Jericho. Why? Jesus is going to Jerusalem because of this particular season and time of the year in that biblical time. It was Passover was just about to begin a national jewish holiday the crowds are going to make this hike jesus is going with them on this hike approaching jerusalem these hills and rocky trails the crowds of people are including jesus and his disciples they're about to leave the area of jericho when a blind man named bartimaeus he sits by the roadside and he hears people saying there's jesus There's Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Nazarene. And he begins to shout and try to try to call out, try to understand what he says here. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He can hear, but he cannot see. But he's hearing these things about Jesus. He comes to the conclusion, Jesus is the Messiah. And that's why he uses that phrase, Jesus, son of David. Son of David, very interesting phrase. It is a reference not only to the kingship of David, more than a thousand years before when David was king in Israel, but also it is repeated through the Old Testament and scriptures as a reference to the coming Messiah. And for Bartimaeus to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, Bartimaeus has come to the conclusion All that he has heard has led him to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That phrase, Son of David, is used ten times in Mark's Gospel. No, ten times in Matthew's Gospel, three times in Mark's Gospel. Son of David equals Messiah. In our recent Sundays, we've had several sermons from Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 is just such an interesting, crucial chapter, kind of ending the the ministry time of Jesus and before all this Holy Week and Passion Week time with Jesus. Towards the beginning of Mark chapter 10, starting in the 17th verse, is an encounter of Jesus with a rich young man. And the end, of course, is Jesus' encounter with Bartimaeus. So I'm making a comparison today between Bartimaeus the blind man, and between the rich young man. 
And I'm making this comparison to illustrate the concept of discipleship, of walking in the footsteps of Jesus, of following Jesus. There are some ways, some numerous ways to make these comparisons, these two very different people who encountered Jesus. I read for you the encounter of Jesus with Bartimaeus. Let me now read for you the encounter of Jesus and the rich young man to refresh your memory. It says in Mark 10, verse 17, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before Jesus, said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. And then he says, you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud and honor your father and mother. The young rich man says, teacher, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he says, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. I've reminded you that Bartimaeus is blind and calls Jesus a messianic title, while the rich young man calls Jesus what? Good teacher. By all appearances, this rich young man looks like he's blessed by God. He has wealth, and of course, people assume he's a good person. And by the look of things, this young man, he's on his way to God's kingdom, right? But things are not always as they seem. This is the rich young man who wants to know what he must do to inherit eternal life. Well, Bartimaeus only asked for Jesus to do something, for Jesus to have mercy on him, to have mercy on Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is relying on God's work, while the young man, he wants to work himself, to do something to earn his salvation and eternal life. Perhaps this young rich man's family had put a lot of emphasis on hard work, their wealth may even be due to their great business sense. Maybe they were merchants. Maybe they bought something and brought it into the land of Israel, into Jerusalem to sell, adding some value to this commodity. Maybe hard work comes naturally to this young man. That's nothing to sneeze at. Hard work's a good thing in general, right? We value hard work. It's just in regards to work and our salvation, though, there's something different going on. Jesus is the one who has already worked and accomplished our salvation. There's nothing that we can do to work or earn it. All we can do is receive the grace. Bartimaeus is asking for help. Bartimaeus is expressing a hope that's filled with faith. This reminds me of a verse Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Bartimaeus is blind. He can't see, can he? What about the rich man? He is quick to give an answer to Jesus' question about the commandments. He tells Jesus, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Hmm. Sounds a bit like a brag. Not very humble. Well, Bartimaeus, the second time, he cries out and shouts, Son of David, have mercy on me. He knows he needs help. He knows that Jesus can help him. I think we can accurately assess the situation and understand that Bartimaeus is humble and realizes he can't help himself. Well, yes, that rich young man is kind of the opposite of humble. Strong differences between these two men. Let me share with you a couple other obvious differences between Bartimaeus and the young man in chapter 10. Bartimaeus is poor and blind. The young man is rich and seeing. This leads to Bartimaeus being poor and blind, having to be dependent on others. And ultimately, dependent on God. The young man, on the other hand, is a rich young man. He's self-sufficient. Unable, also when Jesus gives him a challenge to 
see a future for himself if he is generous and gives away his wealth to become dependent on God. These traits, the differences between what Bartimaeus is and the rich young man, these traits speak to us about discipleship, about a life that is intended to be discipleship, to be a disciple, one who follows Jesus. These traits impact a life. To be a disciple is to be dependent. Being a disciple of Jesus goes beyond recognizing that Jesus is God. It goes beyond liking Jesus. To be a disciple is to daily, to frequently recognize that you are dependent on Jesus. Have you called out to Jesus for help? Have you humbled yourself? Have you admitted that what you do have, all that you've worked for in your life, all the material possessions that you have, all the goodwill you have in the community, all the good reputation that you have with people, that none of that makes you worthy of being saved? What we can do is only confess that we are broken people and ask, even beg as Bartimaeus begged Jesus for his mercy to not punish for what we deserve punishment for, disobedience and disrespect. And interestingly, Jesus hears the voice of Bartimaeus, and Jesus says, call him to come to me. Call Bartimaeus to come to me. And Bartimaeus follows the directions and comes to Jesus. He submits to the will of Jesus. And Bartimaeus is healed of blindness. The young man, the rich young man, is invited to follow Jesus as well. He is told to sell all you have and give it to the poor. Come follow me. But it says the rich young man walks away feeling sad, ultimately choosing not to follow Jesus, ultimately choosing not to be a disciple of Jesus. What does Bartimaeus do with the invitation? What does Bartimaeus do with that invitation from Jesus? Well, it says he immediately follows Jesus down the road. He's become healed. Now he can work. Now he has a greater self-sufficiency. But what does he do? <laughs> he follows Jesus. Jesus deeply loves all people. And Jesus desires that everyone that everyone, regardless of their financial situations, regardless of the nation in which they were born in, regardless of their race or their ethnic background, Jesus desires that anyone and that everyone would seek him. And Jesus wants us to follow him. And Jesus wants us to serve both God and our neighbors and to serve them not because we have to, not because we need to, serve out of gratitude out of the gift that Jesus gives to us of salvation and life and life eternal, we serve out of the gratitude for the gift that we have received, that we can care for others, that we can love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul. Jesus wants us to follow him, and Jesus wants us to be a servant as well, a servant to all. Just as Jesus served, we serve with that same heart of a servant as Jesus served. Only Jesus, he went all the way to the cross. And so there's a challenge, isn't there? Challenge to follow Jesus. But not a challenge because you have to. In order to get your salvation, that's already been accomplished. That's Jesus' gift to you. It's Jesus' grace to you. You couldn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. But he gives it to you. And as you respond and follow Jesus, you will begin to see and you will continue to see more and more clearly what that means to give your life to serve others. And to that, all God's people can say, Amen.
Let us continue our time together, making a great review of our Christian faith using these words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us share this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us all come near to God and confess our sin and ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. The Lord is merciful and will keep his promise to forgive our sin. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, I confess my sins, known and unknown, and my decisions to not follow where you are leading me. I believe that without your mercy I am lost. Please wash away all my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. Hear the very good news. Jesus forgives you. God sent Jesus to us and his plan was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. And then he conquered death, giving those who believe in him everlasting life. Jesus continues to call the unbelieving to turn to him and repent and believe while there's still time. Go ahead and be seated. It is time for the offering and this is where we'll move our little table to the front and center and have a processional offering. Uh, you can come at any point you wish. We won't be ushering you from front to back or back to front. Just come down the aisle and make your offering as you choose. And if you need some help, hand it to a friend and let them take it up front for you. I do invite you to stand, if you're able, for the prayers and the end of the service. Let us join our hearts and minds, our voices together as we pray 
After each prayer petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, you know us. You know our hearts. Help us to understand more and more what it means to be your disciple, to be humble, dependent on you for life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and merciful Lord, when we are confronted by ideas and beliefs, help us to look to you as our authority. Help us to be strong and courageous when we face opposition to our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of all who return to you, seeking forgiveness for their sins. Give them both pardon and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, as your people gather together, may your Holy Spirit indeed be upon us and give us understanding and wisdom to, to hear your word and that, it were, that your word from the Bible would work upon us freely, that we wouldn't inhibit it in any way. Lord, that we could respond to that word with loving service and gratitude for all that you give to us. Help us to have steadfast faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, we pray for your presence and healing power in medicine and in the miraculous. For those we know that need your help, we are taking a few moments and silently naming them in our heart. O oh Lord, comfort them, each of them, with a sure confidence in your care. Be their defender in times of danger. Keep them in your lasting peace and safety. O oh Lord, give them healing from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you that you have taught us what you would have us to believe and do. Help us to keep your word in our hearts so that we might be strengthened in faith, that we might be transformed by your holiness that we might have your comfort in this life and unto our death. And to that, all God's people can say, Amen. O oh Lord, Lord Jesus, remember us as we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the lord bless you and keep you the lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.